For those of you who are more do-it-yourselfers who want to uh, winterize your RV on your own, we're just going to do a quick tutorial video just to teach you how, how to do it, uh, what the process is, just to make sure you don't miss anything and that your RV is, is safe for the winter. First thing you're wanna, gonna wanna do is find the water pump. Uh, in this unit, I found it here behind an access panel in the front compartment. If you're having trouble finding the water pump, uh, the easiest way to find it is to turn it on and just listen for the, and open one of the faucets and just listen for the sound. The pump does make a humming sound, so if you follow that sound, uh, that's usually the easiest way to find where the pump is if you can't find it. In this unit, it's behind an access panel. I've removed the screws just so you can get at it easily here. Um, behind here, you will find the water pump is here and you will see that there are two valves for this system. This valve that's coming up through the floor is going to your fresh tank. If you close that valve, that's gonna ensure you don't have any antifreeze going into your fresh tank and that the fresh water supply remains uncontaminated. The second valve you're gonna find is attached to a hose that appears to be going nowhere. This is gonna be your siphon line that you use to suck the antifreeze out of the jug into the water system. So you're gonna to wanna to open that valve uh, to allow flow through the pump. You're gonna to need to drain your fresh water tank. Usually you will find the valve um, directly under where the fill is, uh, sometimes not always. Um, you just want to find find that valve and make sure that is open. Our fresh tank in this unit is currently empty, um, but make sure to not forget to open that drain valve when you do your winterizing. The next thing you're going to want to find is where your water heater is. On this unit, we have found it at the back of the RV. Uh, so when we go inside to look for the valves for the water heater, we're going to be wanting, wanting to look somewhere along the back wall. So we can go inside the RV. So when we're inside, we'll head towards the back wall here. Now our back wall is blank. However, it was slightly towards this side of the unit. So I found an access panel here uh, that I've loosened. There's just four screws holding it in. If you remove that access panel, you're gonna find your water heater. Now, majority of modern day units use a two valve bypass system, which this unit has. Um, if that's the case, you're gonna wanna turn both valves so that they are indicating the bypass line. An easy way to remember uh, which way the water is flowing is the direction the valves are pointing. So in this case, uh, hot water is flowing out of the top of the water heater and cold water is flowing into the top or into the bottom of the water heater. If I turn that valve, it's indicating towards this bypass line and I'll open this valve as well. So what that's going to do is stop the flow of antifreeze from going into the water heater and allow it to bypass that and go throughout the rest of the system. You don't want to get antifreeze in your water heater. Um, it's, we're going to use a non-toxic antifreeze, so it's not, uh, it's not crucial that you don't get this done, but it's going to save you at least six gallons of antifreeze if you don't do the water heater. And also it's going to keep your water from being foamy the next time you use it. So now that we've bypassed the water heater, we can go ahead and turn on our water pump. In this unit, uh, we found the controls for the water pump in the bathroom. Um, it's a fairly common spot to find it. Uh, you'll turn it on, you'll notice the switch comes on. Uh, we can go back outside now to where we had our jug of antifreeze. We stick the end of that siphon line that we opened the valve on into the jug of antifreeze. This now becomes our supply for the RV. Now when opening the faucets, I like to start at the farthest one from where the pump is. In this case, it's gonna be the outside kitchen that we found or, or that we walked past originally. For this outside kitchen, we're just gonna install our tap here. And you're gonna wanna run the cold water faucet on this until this the clear water runs pink with antifreeze. It is the farthest one again from the pump, so it's gonna take quite a while for the antifreeze to get all the way through the system. You are gonna get some air bubbles spurting. There we go, now we can see it's running pink. You can shut off the cold water faucet and open the hot water faucet. It's gonna originally run pink, but then you're gonna go back to the white, and now we're pink again, so you can shut that off. Uh, then you just need to go around the RV doing each fixture. So we'll go inside, 
you can see right now it's running clear with water. You see it turned pink. That means antifreeze has gone through the system. You can shut it off. I saw that we ran low on antifreeze doing that faucet. So we will go switch our jug now. For this particular unit, I brought three jugs. That may be more than we need, but it's always better to have too much than not enough. Uh, See, so yeah, I'll just switch to a new jug and we will continue on and do the bathroom. Cold first, got to give the pump a second here to repressurize after it ran dry. There it goes. We've got clear running there. And then hot tap. So that runs pink. We've got the shower. So that runs pink. Hot side. And then finally the toilet. This is obviously only cold water, but run it till it runs pink. Um, depending on what type of antifreeze you're using, once you've shut off the pump, you may want to clear the antifreeze from the toilet. If you're using an expensive propylene glycol, it's not going to stain, but some of the, the uh, lower quality plumbing antifreezes can stay in your toilet and sink. So you're going to want to make sure you, you wipe those out once you're done. Once you've done that, you can shut off your water pump and we're going to go out to the city water. To winterize the city water, you want the pressure off of the system. So I'm going to, with the pump off, just open uh, one of the taps just to release the pressure from the system. Once that's done, you can close it again. Then when you get to the city water connection, you're going to want to remove this screen. In there, you're going to find a little white button. Uh, this is the check valve that keeps the water from being able to push out of this system when the pump is on. Once you have removed the pressure off of the system, you can push that button in. It's going to squirt water out. You're just going to want to hold it until you see a little bit of that pink come dribbling out there. And now your city water is winterized. Uh, this unit also has a black tank flush. You don't need to winterize the black tank flush as it's pure gravity fed. Um, but not a bad idea just to check. Remove the screen on this one. Make sure that there is no check valve in it and that it's clear. This one is good. <clears throat> the last and most important step is removing the plug from the water heater. <clears throat> this is the most commonly missed and also the most expensive fix when, it's, when you need to do it. Um, so before you pull the plug on the water heater, which is down here, you're gonna wanna pull the pressure relief valve to release the pressure. Now this unit's been sitting on our lot, so our water heater doesn't have any water in it at the moment. Um, however, this water heater is gonna be pressured up to about 50 PSI when there is water in it. Uh, so you don't want to pull that plug without relieving the pressure off of the system. Now this unit has a suburban water heater. So your plug is gonna be removed by a one and one sixteenth inch socket. If you have an Atwood water heater, you're gonna use a 15 16 inch remove it you're simply going to put your socket on and remove the plug again this water heater is empty so we're not going to have anything coming out uh, however on yours you likely will have water the last thing to check is if you do have an electric water heater as well make sure your electric switch on the outside here is turned into the off position that's just going to uh, make sure that you can't accidentally dry fire, the water, dry fire the water heater without any water in it. Once you've done that, uh, your unit is winterized. You can just go ahead and put all your access panels back on. And then we recommend you remove your battery and store it inside over the winter and just give it a couple of charges throughout the winter. Uh, in our cold Alberta winters, you can't leave the battery on the RV uh, because over time it will discharge and that battery will become pure water and it will freeze and ruin your battery. So make sure you remove that battery for the winter as well. The only other thing we recommend you do is while you're walking around the unit, just inspect all of the sealant just to make sure you're not gonna end up with any water leaks over the winter. And then your RV is packed up and ready for winter.